with that, I'd like to lead to our final presentation of the day. Uh, it has co-presenters Jenny Ramsire and Ben Ryle. They are part of the EDGE team at Meta and are coming to us today from Boston and Los Angeles. This is their first time presenting at Nanog, and it's a pleasure to have them speaking with us today. Welcome to you both. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks very much for having us. We're excited to be here, excited to be in Montreal, excited to be in person. Um, as I said, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the work we've been doing in Meta and really trying to talk about um, automating the app here in App Mailbox and really the streamlining we've been doing about that. If I can make the clicker work. So, talking about the problem we're trying to solve here. Um, you know, we operate a large CDN, we operate a large uh, network connected to multiple IXs globally. You can see some of the stats on the screen here. Um, so we're connected to an excess of 210 internet exchanges globally. And being connected to a lot of internet exchanges and being in a lucky position that people really want to peer with us to get their cat pictures, that means we get lots of requests uh, for peering. So you can see that from the stats, we get about 500 emails per month to our peering app mailbox. And of that, about 100 plus of those emails are genuine peering requests we need to handle. You know, lots of IXs, as I said, lots of peering. That means in excess of 44,000 public peering sessions we've got configured globally. And that keeps rising. Looking at the trend of requests, you know, it's not one off. Um, you can see here two lines. The blue line shows total emails received month by month. And this is a couple of years worth of data. And the kind of uh, other line um, shows um, the number of valid peering requests you, we need to handle. So you can see there's a few peaks and troughs in these graphs. Um, that could be uh, holiday freezes, change freezes, but also, you know, when we connect to a new IX and we, you know, announce that, well, that generates a lot of inbound requests. But you can see the pattern is pretty consistent of, you know, 100, 150 valid requests per month. You know, what we're trying to do, you know, I've said it already, we're trying to have a streamlined experience here. We want to make it easy for our peers to request public peering, see the status of their public peering, and really manage that. One of our things is move fast, and we want our peers to be able to move fast with us as well. So, Jenny, what did we do? Thank you, Ben. So, we automated it. So, we made it so that the handling of the peering at fb.com mailing list um, could be handled automatically. So let's go through how it works. So you may be familiar with our facebook.com slash peering page. If you haven't, you know at the top we've got our peering policy, we've got some technical requirements, and then at the bottom we've now added a button which says request public peering. Now before I go into that, I want to point out if you look in the upper right, uh, you'll see that you don't have to be logged into Facebook in order to view the page. So <laughs> we've heard no one wants to use their personal Facebook for their work experience, and so you can stay logged out and still go um, to the button below. So let's say you click the button. Again, we're doing screenshots, not a live demo. So if you request public peering, this is still on the facebook.com page. You'll be redirected to PeeringDB. So we've set up PeeringDB OAuth um, as the login provider for our peering requests. All of our peers have a PeeringDB account, and so it's very easy to use that to decide what uh, networks you should be allowed to transact on or not transact on. So if you log in here, um, you'll get this pop-up which says, um, authorizes us basically to co collect uh, what networks you manage and then your email address so we can send you our automated communications telling you about your session status as they come up. So you authorize, and you'll be redirected back to the Facebook.com page. So this is the logged in view. Again, logged in with peering DB OAuth. Um, you can see you've got your AS number, you've got your email address. This is the one on peering DB by default. So if you'd like it to be something else, you can change it, and we'll send our messages to that instead. And then down below, you can see all of the sessions, both that if you have sessions with us, um, you'll see the status is there, but if you don't, um, you'll see them pre-selected, so you can just click right through and say, yes, I'd like to peer at all of these locations, and then you can request public peering. So let's see the zoomed in view. If you expand an exchange, you'll see that you can see the session status for each individual session by IP pair. So while you're waiting for your sessions to be configured, you can come back and check to see how it's going. So let's say, let's say that you 
uh, request public peering. After that point, your request will land in our approval queue where um, we'll do some analysis to decide and then configure the peering. So that was public peering. That's available now. Um, you get to see the sneak preview uh, for private peering, which we're going to be releasing again on facebook.com slash peering very soon. So I'll walk you through what that's going to look like. The same as public peering, except you'll see here you can pick your which uh, connections you'd like to set up. This is the adding a new one version. If you'd just like to augment an existing private peering link, again, we'll offer that as well. And again, um, once you click the blue button at the bottom, that'll land in our approval queue and we will start configuring that. So this is in testing mode now. We'd love for interested parties to come talk to us at, after if you'd be interested in beta testing it with us because we need people to try it out. So please do let either of us or anyone from Meta know. Thanks. So like we said in the beginning, this is all to replace peering at fb.com. So what happens if you email it today? Well, you get the following message. So it says, thank you for your interest in peering with Meta, and it points you back to our facebook.com slash peering page. So this is very useful for us because it reduces the load on our on-call, which allows the peering on-call to work on other more impactful projects, and also makes it easier for you as peers because now you have a self-service way to configure the sessions at your convenience and then monitor their status again at your convenience without needing to contact us to ask. So hopefully it's better for everyone. So I've touched on this before, but let's go through the step-by-step -step flow for what happens when you try this out. So first off, we've got the option, if you email peering at fb.com, you'll get the uh, email categorizer, uh, will auto-reply. So let me touch on that, right? We don't just reply to every request that comes into peering at fb.com because some of them may not be peering requests, right? So we have a service that goes through and categorizes public peering request, private peering request, other kind of request, mailing list, and for anything deemed a public peering and soon private peering, um, we'll reply back with, hey, please go to facebook.com slash peering. Um, so let's say you've emailed or you know you went through straight to facebook.com slash peering. Either way, you're going to hit the OAuth, right? So you'll log in, you'll get redirected, and then you'll come back with the token, and we'll show you the logged in view. Or you know, if you're a peer who's on the, sorry, the network partner portal, you can also just go to the form directly there. But either way, let's say you've submitted something in the form. Um, afterwards, it'll land in our internal queue. This is just so we can review the incoming requests to make sure that they meet our peering policy. And we have a service which goes through and issues a suggestion for each request, you know, should we approve this, should we not, and then sometimes you're automatically approved and sometimes a human will review it. Either way, um, once that's done, we'll start our automated peering configuration project. So we have a workflow that will go and set the sessions up with no human intervention required and then also send you automated communications so you know, hey, we've configured our side of the stuff, you need to configure your side, okay, we've detected that everything is configured, thank you for peering with us. So again, that's all automatic now. Next slide. So since we launched this in um, April of last year, well, how's it worked, right? So we've gotten about 5,000 emails. Out of those emails, we've gotten 1,526 automatic requests through our automated services. And then of those, we've approved 1,525 of them. So a lot. And this has saved us a lot of time because as you can see, we've configured over 17 thousand sessions automatically. So that's an... <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> um, so we configured them automatically, which has saved us a ton of time. All right, so there were a number of considerations we had when we were setting this up, right? First off, we wanted to have some kind of queuing system. This was so that we could be confident that our services were doing what we expected. You know, we wanted to make sure we were acting correctly. Gradually, we've been moving to more automated approvals as we get more confident in our system. Secondly, as you'll see if you go to the page, we've taken a reliance on peering DB OAuth. Is that okay? Well, actually, we already required that all of our peers have peering DB OAuth before we started this, so we decided that was fine. And then finally, as I said before, right, we wanted to make sure you could hit the page without having a Facebook account. We've heard that 
you know, personal Facebook for work is maybe not what you want, so now you can get to the page while you're logged out. So we'd love to see this as the sort of the industry standard, and we'd love to see you try it out. So please, please go to our page and check it out. If you go, you can see all of your BGP sessions in one place. You can easily configure new BGP sessions. Everyone has a peering DB account, so hopefully you can use it. And then, you know, I know we're lucky in that we have a whole department basically devoted to setting this kind of thing up. But if you're interested in doing it for your own network as well, um, the peering DB OAuth was easy to implement. It took us about a day to set the whole thing up. Um, other people are using it as well. You know, IXP manager, peering manager are also using the OAuth. And with all of this, the automation is saving us and hopefully you a lot of time. So if you are interested, yes. Um, these are the components that you would need to do this yourself, right? You'll need some tool that will generate per peer configs for your routers. There's some open source ones for this. Um, you need the automation to actually push the config, again, so that a human doesn't have to do it. And then finally, you're also going to need some kind of system to monitor your session status so you can tell your partners whether or not the session is up. And you'll need some kind of engine to coordinate everything. And then finally, you need some kind of page where your peers can go and actually request the sessions. So with these sort of key components, um, you could set up a very similar model to ours as well. So over to you, Ben. Thanks, Jenny. So thinking about the industry standard piece, you know, we're keen to try and, you know, we stand here, we use PeeringDB already heavily. Um, you need a PeeringDB record to be able to peer with Meta, to peer with Facebook. And now you also need, uh, you can use, you know, the OAuth, and it'd be great to make this standard for authentication for peering services. Um, you know, we're keen to use open source tools. Um, Jenny mentioned it a moment ago, um, but you know, we're using PeeringDB here, but Peering Manager is something else that will fit into what we're talking about for people to be able to kind of build and use this themselves. You know, then thinking forward to the future, we'd really like to have an API in a programmatic way uh, so we can remove human interaction. So for really simple, easy peering requests, actually it can be machine to machine that talks to set these things up. This is something we're thinking about, something, you know, the team's working on. If this is something you're interested in talking to us about and helping develop, then, you know, please talk to us now, talk to us later. It'll be the peering coordination forum. I'm happy to think about that more. And we've only just begun. Um, you know, we've talked about what we've got now, which is public peering. We've talked about what's coming in the future, private peering. But we're really trying to work out and understand how we can develop this further. Um, you know, making the cues and the automation around which, what we can accept automatically better, saving more time. But also, we've got an in-network uh, caching program um, called FNA. That's currently your email and address to, uh, like you would a peering request, and we're thinking about how we can make that more automated for the decision flow in the future too. Call out, you know, call to action. If you've not tried this already, please visit facebook.com slash peering. Happy to take feedback if you have any, you know, we'll be at the peering form as I mentioned, or, you know, feel free to pop us an email. With that, questions? If not, I guess a bit of time to uh, go before uh, peering. <laughs> Hello, uh, I am Matt Ringel, formerly of Subspace. Um, so the one question I have here is, um, I'll start with one question. Let's see if you'll allow me to give me a second. Um, first question is, this effectively gives an API for actors to, um, for actors to configure BGP sessions on your network. What did you consider in terms of the threat model for allowing people to basically configure your routers for you? So I, that, that's a very good question. Um, so like we mentioned earlier, right, we're not actually allowing you to configure sessions on the router. We're allowing you to request that we configure the sessions. So, you know, once you request, um, your request will end in a queue, um, at which point we will be reviewing the items in the queue either by a human or under certain circumstances automatically. Great. Um, the, the other question I had is, um, so 
what goes in, so this goes into setting up the session. What is the full circle, I didn't see in the flowchart, kind of the full circle for the, yes, it's up and everybody agrees it's up and it's doing the right amount of prefixes and everybody, like where does that fall into the cycle? Does that fall into the catchment of this particular tool and how so? Sure, sure. So I don't know if you've requested peering with us before, but basically you'll get a series of emails from us. So first you'll get one that says, hi, we have configured the sessions at the following locations um, with the IP addresses. Then you'll get a subsequent one saying, I, we, in that same workflow, then monitor to see, um, are, is the traffic up on our side? Is, are we exchanging traffic with you? And if they come back as established, then we'll send you a second email saying, hello, we have noticed that these sessions have become established. Thank you for peering with us. And then we're finished. If for some reason we don't notice that you are established, then we'll send you some reminder messages um, over the course of about two weeks um, saying, hello, we've noticed you haven't configured peering yet. Um, if you're having trouble, please contact, and then our contact mailing list. Great, thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you again today, Jenny and oh, Ben. There might be one more question. <laughs> oh, I have to say who I am. Crap. I'm Adair. I'm from Internet, too. We're the best. Um, I was wondering um, if you're grabbing all of the information from peering DB, how often do you have to go back to the submitting person and say, yeah, your peering DB is not that correct. Would you update your information or correct it for us? Um, we find generally um, people are keeping up to date and when we join an IX, we're encouraging people to update peering DB. The things we find sometimes that are out of date might be max prefix. Um, because we base some of our uh, uh, you know, filters on that, basically. And that's sometimes we need to go to. But because people have reached the point they're already requesting Imperium with us, and we've made it clear, we generally find, in most cases, it's up to date. Okay. I was thinking Max Prefix as well. So thank you. Thanks. Cool. Any other questions? No? Guess not. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you again today, Jenny and Ben. Thanks so much. Thank you.